Welcome into Press Box Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of Press Box and PressBoxOnline.com. And with me are Ross Grimsley, the old 0.2 percenter on baseball and Mac, baseball's immaculate grid, uh, and Luke Jackson, managing editor of Press Box. We're here for our weekly go around on the topic of the Baltimore Orioles and baseball in general. But I got to start out with a question. And that is what company has the expertise and technology to make your home substantially more energy efficient, comfortable, and even virus free? Well, that would be AJ Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis at ajmichaels.com. Well, it wasn't a very good week for me this week over on superbook.com, but it may be a good week ahead for you guys out there. Superbook is the most trusted name in Vegas. And now you can use promo code STANCHARLES23 to score up to $250 with their first bet bonus. Win or lose, they will match your first bet up to $250 with promo code STANCHARLES23, all one word with no spaces. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And this was a bad week for me. The Lions absolutely killed me yesterday uh, on pro football. I just uh, couldn't imagine that the Bears would play them that tight a game. But anyway, I digress. We're here to talk baseball. And guys, there are a couple of signings in baseball today, and I want to get your opinion on both of those signings. Uh, Lance Lynn signed a one-year, ostensibly a one-year, $10 million plus a $1 million buyout if they don't pick up the option. So it's really two – it's got $3 million in incentives this year, but it's essentially a two-year $24.9 million deal. Um, you like that deal, Ross, for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals? Right. I know. I – you know, he was seven and two last year with the Dodgers. Uh, you know, he did lead the all of baseball and give it up home runs. So I, I kind of scratched my head, but here's a guy that, you know, uh compared to some of your top tier one, tier two, even your tier three type guys are gonna get big bucks. Now that's a, you know, here's a guy that's gonna give you some innings. Uh, you know, they score some runs for him, play some defense. It might be uh, you know, a, a good deal. I know the Cardinals are looking for uh uh, top of the rotation starters. So let me I don't just think ask it, you. Let me ask you this though: Is it a conversation that John Mazalak and his general manager have with Lance Lynn and his agent? Can you be upfront with somebody like that and say, "Hey, we got to address the eight thousand pound elephant in the room. You're forty pounds overweight, maybe <laughs> sixty. But you, <laughs> do you think this includes some type of stipulation that they're not?" They don't want to embarrass the player by saying it. it. It's it's unfortunate. He's still a very talented arm, but that arm is attached to a body that doesn't look like. I mean, he looks worse than Bartolo Colon did. Well, look, look at the uh, Rick Ruschel, Mickey Lolich. Yeah. Some yeah, of these Rick guys. Ruschel, Rick Ruschel won over two hundred exactly. games. In the and he was he was very agile on the mound, moving around. Yes, he was fielded his position. So I don't know that much about Lance Land as far as if that affects him or he can pitch effectively uh, at that, uh, at that weight that he's at. So it could be a lot of times you, you take that off and now he's a completely different pitcher. He looks good, but yeah. he's not effective. So yeah. that, that's something I, I think you have to take into consideration. You know, you start messing with that and then, okay, I got a skinny guy. He looks good, but he can't get me out. Wait a minute. <laughs> Luke, Luke, are you, uh, do you think that included at least a discussion of his shape? Um, I'm sure that there were some expectations outlined, um, you know, in terms of. Now, keep in mind, this is an organization that spent $85 million on the catcher at three weeks into the season. They were questioning how he could catch all the game. Right. Right. And I mean, you look at what led to the Cardinals downfall last year. They had a pretty decent offense, but their starting rotation really, really miserable. scuffled. Yeah. And at any one time, they had like three or four rotation spots that really they weren't getting a, a whole lot out of. Uh, and so I think Lance Lynn provides some degree of stability. And as mm -hmm. Ross mentioned, some predictability in terms of his innings. 
Uh, now, the home runs are an issue. They have been an issue for him the last several years. Uh, but St. Louis is a pretty good park for fly ball pitchers. And he did improve once he went from Chicago to Los Angeles. However, the home runs, still an issue. Uh, so I think at this point, you just sort of understand that he's going to give up a lot of fly balls. And quite a few of them are going to leave the park. But he's going to pound the zone. He's not going to beat himself. And he's going to get you pretty deep into the game, even when he doesn't have it. And the Orioles saw the value of that in a veteran who can do that in Kyle Gibson. When he didn't have it, he still found his way into the sixth inning, and he kept the bullpen in um, in shape in for fact, the next yeah, night. Fact, yeah. So I, I think that that's what the Cardinals are hoping for out of Lance Lynn, a little bit of what Kyle Gibson provided the Orioles last year. And then maybe later in the offseason, they attack the top end of their rotation now that they have Yeah, I think they – when they saw what Nola went for and how quickly teams are going to try and keep their own, mm -hmm. I think that they they made this move quickly. Uh, was this a guy that could have helped the Orioles? I mean, that that's about as favorable a contract as I can imagine for two you're, years on a guy like him. As you're going to get someone who has had a lot of success in the past. Yeah. Um, I, I don't see Lance Lynn as a fit in the AL East. Now, I'm not saying that the Orioles couldn't have helped him. I'm not saying that Camden Yards wouldn't have been a, a good fit for him, particularly with the left field wall being where it is. I think the NL Central, at this point of his career, is a much good better spot for Lance Lynn than Great the point. Angels. Great point. Uh, Ross, the other trade uh, signing, free agent signing, was Ronaldo Lopez signed with the Atlanta Braves and got three years at $30 million total, 10 a year for three years. He's a relief pitcher now, ostensibly, but they said, hey, not so fast. We want to we want to take him to spring training and get him ramped up to start because we think that he could possibly fit there at the end of the rotation, but we like it chances of him ramping up and then going back to relief rather than trying to ramp up in the middle of the season. Can you talk to that, Ross? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you should make your decision uh, before spring training what you're going to do with uh, uh, with them, because I mean, uh, going from okay, we're going to start, now we're going to change in the middle of the season. That's a little bit uh, a lot to ask for most pitchers. Not saying that some can't do that, but I mean, you got to redo your whole uh, uh, how you prepare. You know, but from a but from a physical standpoint, is it smart to start a guy off? ramped up ready to go six seven innings and then move the relief rather than the other way around when he's not built up yeah no well, i mean it's better to build your pitchers up with uh more innings than they have to pitch right you know i i, I believe that but uh i you know i, I it's you know you, you you need to have a plan where the guy this is what you're going to do being a everyday player a utility player or starter you, this is what we're going to do and, uh, and and move from there. And then uh, you don't need to have a guy guessing, uh, am I going to platoon with this guy? Am I going to be a starter? Uh, it's tough enough to be a reliever and know when to get up, know when to what to do. Uh, I don't. I know I don't have to uh, get close, or I can just get ready. And as the game as the game progresses, guys get on base. Okay, I ramp it up a little bit, you know. So it, it's a different a different thing. But I think going into spring training, you need to have a plan. This is what we're going to do. And change in the middle of the season can affect guys di different. Everybody's di different. So I, I say, I, I think personally, go in with a plan. And if you have to change at some point, then, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a, a thing that you have to do, then do I it. I think a big part of that will be they'll see what else they can sign. Like if they get sure. a sunny gray, that would probably mean that Lopez will be in the bullpen. But right now, it appears that they're, they're going to get him ramped up. Uh, Luke. The, the Atlanta Braves, assuming that he ends up in the bullpen eventually, they've addressed, they, they've they uh, acquired, they gave up five players for Aaron Bummer, which mm -hmm. they must see something in him that right. they really think they can fix. Right. They re-signed Pierce Johnson. They mm -hmm. re-signed Joe Jimenez. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty aggressive to make sure their bullpen is deep and long, isn't it? Well, I think the Atlanta Braves are a perfect example of a team that believes that there is no substitute 
for a swing and miss fastball. A, the, the relief pitcher is late in a game who can beat you in the zone with a fastball. Uh, and it seems to me that they're collecting those types of players because Reynaldo Lopez, his results have been a little up and down. Right. Now, he's kind of been a generic setup man, and, but I'm guessing they think that they can get more out of him than the White Sox did. This is a kid with big stuff. This is a kid mm-hmm. who's always had big stuff. He's up to 99, uh, but he's had a little bit of command issues in terms of missing in the middle of the plate and with walks. Uh, and then Aaron Bummer, he's got huge stuff. Huge yeah. stuff from the left yeah. side, uh, but he had some. Uh, I think he had a five ERA in uh, wherever he was last year. So, yeah, they're he taking. May have had a, he may have had an ERA over six. I think. Believe and, it or not. So, so yeah, they're taking a chance on stuff, uh, and you always hear Brandon Hyde talk about in his uh, post game press conference. You know, why did you go to pitcher X in this big spot? Well, I'm betting on the stuff. You know, you hear that a lot. Braves are betting on the stuff with these guys. Uh, and they think that former Orioles pitching coach Rick Kranitz can help get it out of them. Three years, $10 million a year for Ronaldo Lopez, the price of relief pitchers of really that, that might have a resume that the Orioles would be interesting in, I think just went sky high again. You know? Yeah, I mean, a guy like we were talking about Hector Neris a week ago. Right. What do you think he's getting? Thirteen, he, fourteen million dollars a get, year. He might get two years, twenty-eight million dollars, yeah. or something yeah. like that. Okay. Yeah. Hey, um, along those lines, I promised everybody that we'd talk a little bit about free agents for the Orioles, and I'd I'd say that we can mention hitters, and everybody knows I love Justin Turner and think he'd be a great fit, especially if the club does trade uh, Santander or one of the other bats. Uh, So I like him, but I thought we'd confine ourselves for the most part today to free agent pitchers and then trade candidates that we see. Ross, I'll let you start. Do you have a free agent or two that you like that could help the Orioles pitching staff? Well, I mean, I think you have to understand, everybody has to understand that uh, obviously the top tier, one, two, or three, I don't see the Orioles going after any of those guys uh, because of obviously the the money that it's going to cost for them, and uh, I just don't see them doing that. Now your your uh, fourth and fifth tier guys, uh, you got a guy like uh, uh, Matea from the Giants who was in the bullpen where he was effective, but he opted out so he could try to start. This There's is Sean Ma- Sean Manea. Manea, yes. Manea. Okay. And here, here's a guy. Uh, you know, you look at some other guys that are in, I think, the price range, the Orioles, Seth Lugo, he's going to give you innings. He's going to throw strikes. Uh, Mike Clevenger, interesting guy. Yep. He's got a lot of movement. He works really quick. You know, he's had some injuries here and there, but, you know, he's a young guy, going to going to throw up some innings for you. He's uh, also a guy, Ross, he's also a guy that broke protocol the first year of the pandemic. And did oh, yeah, with, I yeah. think it was with Zach um, Plesak. I think it right. was the two of them. They went out drinking somewhere while yeah. the club was on lockdown. Just right. Like he's a he's a something else. He's a, yeah. a different yeah. type of guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jordan Hicks. Here's a guy that uh, I think he's uh he's going to go for some big money. It's it's all a matter of what you know if uh, uh, if the Orioles want to spend this money or they want to make a trade and I, it's. We're going to have to wait. I, I would be surprised if they make a move uh, uh, even after the winter meetings. You know, they're going to wait and see where everything falls out. Uh, 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 the guy from uh, Houston, the right-hander, Hector. Uh, Naris. Naris. He's a guy that's uh, very interesting, you know, yep. that, that could help out. Going to go for some big money, though, I, I, I think. Another guy, Luis Severino. He's a free agent. He's had some injury problems. I think uh, what a lat, uh, an oblique, and, and he had he, a Tommy John, didn't he? Yeah, well, this is well, I, what a few years ago. But I, here's yeah, a guy that's interesting ago. that he could come back, and who knows what the, uh, he could do. Uh, Giolito, I mean, here's a guy young, you know, interesting. I don't know if, it, if he's a if he's a top of the uh, uh, rotation guy. Not not really, but. Uh, also, it looks like, I mean, why wouldn't you bring uh, Kirk Gibson back? These are the guys you're looking Kyle at. Gibson. 
Kyle Gibson. Yeah, Kirk, Kyle. Gibson. Yeah. Kirk, Kirk Gibson's Gibson. a little long on the U2. Well, I yeah, think. you don't want and probably you don't want to have him on the mound anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> Luke, um, you have any names that you like? I don't think I can top Kirk Gibson. Um yeah. that was uh he's gonna come back uh, as a pitcher. Yeah. Uh you mentioned Hector Naris. I like him as a possibility. Uh, now, if they're interested in shopping at the high end, which, again, as Ross said, I think all three of us are, are a little skeptical that they are. I think Eduardo Rodriguez would fit in really nicely yeah. uh, with those top two starters, uh, especially with uh, the configuration of Camden Yards now. Uh, I think a guy that you brought up, uh, Stan, would fit in nicely as well, but more as a bottom of the rotation kind of Kyle Gibson replacement would be Ken- Kenta Maeda. Right. who has had uh, a successful career with the Dodgers and the Twins. And t- he has a history of compiling innings. Now, not necessarily as so much recently, right. uh, but especially this year, I, you know, he dealt with some injuries, but he's been, had a really nice career. It's a little bit older at this point. Yep. And then one guy, I don't think that they'll go this route because they have – kind of a wild card lefty already coming back right. from Tommy John surgery. John means, yeah. But Hunjin Ryu is another guy who has had a lot of success throughout his career. But when he came back from Tommy John this year, his velocity was a little bit down or his velocity, I would say was inconsistent from start yeah. to start. Yeah. And you don't and that know. That happens that. a lot to Tommy John. Pictures, yeah. You know? And when he was like 87 to 88, he was getting hit round but he could still be very effective at 89 to 91. If you think that his velocity is back to where it was before Tommy John surgery, he'll give a very effective 160 innings to somebody next year. And what do you think those two pitchers, the last two you mentioned, um, um, who was the one right before, right before Ray, you May- Maeda. Maeda. What do you think they, what do you think they go for this year? Uh, well, Hunjin Ryu is coming off a really big contract with the Blue Jays. Yep. I think it was four years, 80 mil, if I'm not yep. mistaken, about yeah, 20 got something like 20 per. or 22. Well, he's not going to get 20 mil per uh, this uh, right. in his next contract. I assume he's going to sign a one-year deal. I would think probably in the $10 million range, right around what Lance Lynn signed for, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Kenta Maeda, I would think that he's going to get a one- or two-year deal about 12 to 13 million dollars a year i would think um so we went over it last week you know he's never made he had that weird contract with the dodgers it was like a seven year 26 million dollar yeah it was like eight years 26 something like that he's never made more than two million a year that's a huge bump up for him coming again coming off of tommy john a year and a half ago uh but i think like a two-year 18 19 million dollar contract that would be a pretty good investment for the Orioles. Uh, I'll, I'll give you my couple pitchers. I love this guy, and I've only seen him pitch probably three innings or four innings. That relief pitcher from Tampa, Robert Stevenson, I think his strikeout numbers are eye popping. Mm-hmm. Uh, Luke, you mentioned that I mentioned Maeda a couple weeks ago. I like Kenta Maeda, and I've added another guy. Um, free agent, this left-handed pitcher, Brent Suter. Ross, you might be familiar with him. Um, Pitched for Milwaukee, did very well there in the council years, and they moved him along to Colorado where he pitched last year. What what really impressed me, he had an earn run average of about 3.38. I think it was 69 innings last year. He only gave up two, I think it was 59 and two-thirds only gave up two home runs with half of his appearances roughly pitching in Coors Field. I was very impressed with his ability to keep the ball in the ballpark. You Are you familiar with Suter at all? I'm not. I, I think I've seen him a couple times, yeah. but I, I'm not enough to get the, uh, you know. Um, he's not a hard, he's not a hard thrower. He's more right. a I mean, soft he's, tosser. With you're, looking for a, you're looking for strike throwers. You yep. know, if you got a guy's gonna throw strikes, and especially any of them have anything on the on the ball, uh, that, that that's really something. And there's a few guys out there that are gonna throw strikes for you. And with the, I think with the O's defense, that's big. That's yeah. big. Those strikes don't walk people. Give up home runs. Make sure there's there's solos and uh, not a lot of guys on base at the time. 
getting back to uh, Rayu, you know, when uh, Joe Nathan, Joe Nathan went through, he had surgery and I was the coordinator with the Giants at the time. And his whole goal was to get was his was his was his a Tommy John? No, his was a uh, uh, shoulder. Okay, which is which is usually tougher than the Tommy John. Than the Tommy John to bounce surgery. back. His whole he took a butt kicking uh, and went from double A or triple A to A ball or to double A in Richmond. And his whole goal was to get back to ninety miles an hour. He got back to ninety miles an hour. And after that, he like I said, he took a pounding, and he just kept his kept working and got up. And the rest is you know he had a bunch of saves and a bunch of uh, 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 a bunch of uh, n- not no decisions but uh, saves that he didn't blow. It was his percentage right. was really outstanding. But j- just my point is, it takes a little bit longer for those guys to bounce back. And a lot of them do. So that that's something that you got to keep an eye on and take into consideration, I think. Ross, did you have, I mean, Luke, did you have a comment about any of the pitchers uh, Ross or I mentioned? Sooner no, or... not particularly. Um, but I, a couple more I'll throw out there. Uh, Michael Waka is coming off of two uh, very good uh, seasons, but he's more of a two times through the order guy. He's yeah. not going to give you huge innings. Uh, and he's probably going to be good for an IL stint or two throughout the season. But when he's pitching, it's been pretty damn good the past two years with the he's uh, a guy Sox. that's going to try to squeeze a three year, fifty million. Yeah, I don't not, think he's, he's not a one that. year t- ten. I think, but I think did. he really wants like sixteen, seventeen. A yeah, year. like I, do you think he gets like two years, thirty two, something like that? It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah, uh, and so. What do you and think? He's... What do you think? One of the pitchers Ross mentioned, Luke, uh, Seth Lugo. I think he's like three at thirty six. Yeah, he had a really nice year for San Diego. Yeah, he, he pitched well. And San Diego was so strange this year because you looked at all these individual players who are having really good seasons. Uh, and I remember the Orioles went into San Diego in August, and they and faced they. Got, they... They, they lost two, two or three because yeah. they faced you, Darvish, Michael Waka, and, and Blake Snell uh, back to back to back. And they've got all stars in their lineup. You're saying, how is this team bad? I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then you realize that, like, they missed Rich Hill uh, in the, because they dealt for Rich Hill at the t- deadline <laughs> to uh, help uh, their rotation. That was worse, uh, than, yeah, I, that was worse than Flaherty. Yeah. And, and so uh, it's. <laughs> Lugo, he started with, he was with the Mets. He was he really with good the Mets relief. and just the Padres. Yeah, yeah he, he was um, really good in, uh, in relief with the Mets. He wanted to give starting a chance, went to San Diego. They gave him that opportunity. He was pretty good. Uh, yeah. Again, I, I, think he's earned, I think he's going to earn about mid 30s on a three year. Yeah, you're three probably right. Year. You're yeah. probably right. Absolutely. Hey, what I want to do when we get back, I, I need to do a spot for the Costas in. We'll each get a pitcher that we might like out of a trade, okay? I have a couple names, and I'm going to drop to one of them, and uh, we'll talk about it in just a minute. But now i got to talk to you about – we're talking about things that are uncertain, what the Orioles are going to do and what those pitchers might do when they get here. You never have that uncertainty at the Costas Inn. When you go there, you know your steamed crabs are always going to taste consistently good and consistently meaty. But you do need to call in advance to make a plan to eat your crabs if steamed crabs is your thing. They, you got to check out the size, price point, and uh, availability. And they'll tell you all that at 410 477 1975. Me, I've got, as I've gotten older, I've stopped eating crabs as much as I used to. I'm in for things like steak, the ribs, the pork chops. Crab cakes are fantastic. They got everything you could want under the sun. It's the Costas Inn. They've been there under the sun at 4100 North Point Boulevard for over 50 years. Nick and Pete run the place now. The old man Costas, he's still there, uh, but Nick and Pete are are uh, really in charge of that place. The Costas Inn, one of the finest dining places you'll get in the Baltimore area. 410-477-1975. Back with Ross Grinsley and Luke Jackson, I'm Stan the Fan Charles, Stan Charles 23, 
if you sign up for that special promo at superbook dot superbook sports uh dot com uh guys i'm going to start this out you know luke i've been a jesus luzardo mm-hmm. freak a freak mm-hmm. um if the, if i woke up in three days and all of a sudden i wake up and read on mlb trade rumors or you've texted me hey they traded they got luzardo your guy i'd be happy i'm not going to lie to you but i'm i think i'm liking this other left-handed pitcher that the marlins have Braxton Garrett, uh, he he brings the heat, and he uh, does a good job at keeping teams off the scoreboard. Uh, your thoughts, uh, Luke? You like Garrett? So, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Braxton Garrett pitched against the Orioles and Camden Yards um, this past year. Yep. Uh, if, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, and so he had a really nice year for himself: uh, 159 two thirds innings, 366 ERA. Uh, made 30 uh, starts. Uh, so you like that. So he's coming off a seat of off of a season where you can, you would like to think that you can depend on at least 160 innings out of him. Yeah. So that's, so that's good. Uh, and I, I would say, I would bet on that. He can increase that because he's young enough where he's yeah. probably been a, impacted by the pandemic. Yeah. He's like 26 years old. Yep. And so, but my question would be, would Miami be motivated to move him? And well, we need to make we need to make yes. them motivated by yes. what we offer them. Yes, and so and my next point was going was they certainly need offense. So that would be what would make them motivated to move. Do the Orioles have the pieces that would make them interested in moving Garrett? Number one, and I don't think it's like an arbitration guy who's close to free agency. I think it's more of a guy who has control and who could that possibly be? I'm not so sure. Uh, But, you know, could you certainly be on the right track in terms of a guy like Garrett, who's a little bit younger, who's got plenty of club control remaining where they can dip into their position player surplus and get that guy. I think you're right on the right track. Yeah. Well, what about a Santander move with, let's say Norby attached and we okay. get something else back in the deal from the Marlins, like a, a relief pitcher that we think can step up. Or would they prefer someone maybe like an Austin Hayes who has an extra year of team control? Possibly. 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 Even though we think of Santander being a better, more consistent hitter than Hayes. Well, so, you you that familiar with both pitchers, Lozardo, Jesus? I, I saw him. I, I think I saw him pitch a couple times. And uh, Marlins had some some pretty good uh, arms uh, yep. starting in out, out of the bullpen. So it's a matter of what what are they looking for, and what can you dangle out to get one of these uh, one of these guys. So what it all comes down to, it, and what moves are made prior to this by other teams that changes the whole landscape, basically. I will say this, that from a stuff standpoint, I think yeah. Luzardo, as you've mentioned plenty of times, Stan, is exactly what you're looking for in the ALEs from a stuff standpoint. And I, I just and, looked at his games last year and his inconsistency, his big game games that were he blew up in. Right. He had about six or seven games he blew up in. If you took them out and said – how did he do in his best 24 starts? I'd say he did real well. But yeah. those those six or seven outings are still there. I saw less of that with Gary. Right. There were probably more consistency, more strike throwing, I yeah. would say. So so yeah, I, I think you're you're on the right track. All right. You got anybody you like trade wise? Uh I, you know, I'm th- I'm thinking big boys. Uh okay. I think the big Orioles boys. need uh, a top of the rotation starter to go with Grayson Rodriguez and Kyle Bradish. Tell me about Dylan Cease, boys. Yeah. What do the Orioles have to give up to make Chicago interested in moving D- Dylan Cease? Because their GM Chris Getz has said we're open for business. We'll talk about anybody. We're, we'll talk about Dylan Cease. We'll talk about Luis Robert. What would the Orioles have to give up in order to get two years of Dylan Cease? I Good think question. you'd be looking. I think you'd be looking at with what we have, Ortiz and Norby, and somebody else off the major league roster, and we could probably get back Cease plus somebody in their system. 
you know, a, a relief pitcher or something like that. I think it'd be great if you could just get him. You and, like uh, him. Would just, you just give up him. would you give up Hayes and Norby and Ortiz? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. The, the, this guy is a, you know, top of the rotation guy, good stuff. I think you got him for uh uh two more years. Yeah. So uh, there you got What happened cool. what happened to him this year? Ross, you think it was just being in an, a bad environment? I, I tell you what, it uh, possibly, but uh, I, everybody is, uh, that's the name that a lot of people are talking about. So there's something there, uh, you know, and I would, uh, if you could, I mean, I, I think there's a few different guys out there. And if you, if you get a relief pitcher, a, a back end relief pitcher, then you, then you can uh, uh, ever how you get them trade or, free agency, then you go the other route with the other guy. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, you know, your, your top guys, uh, your uh, Snell, uh, Hader, uh, Noah's gone, Sonny those Gray. Are, those are all those free guys agents. Are out, of, out of the they're way. Free, they're, they're free agents. Though. Right, right. Yeah, we were but, talking uh, here of trades. I like uh, Seattle. Seattle has some starters that are very interesting. Uh, Kirby, Gilbert. Uh, well, Castillo is uh, he's locked up for a while, yeah. Uh, but uh, there's some starters there that'll give you some innings, throw some strikes, good stuff. So, depending on what I think, they're more inclined from what I read, Luke, to trade like a Brian Wu or yeah. or Emerson Hancock. I think they love what they have in Castillo, yeah, uh, Kirby, and uh, uh, the third guy, uh, Logan. Gilbert. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And they should. They should. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think Brian Wu is someone that they, uh, the Mariners could dangle for hitting help. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that gets back to maybe an Ortiz for him. I'm not giving three players for Brian Wu. Right. Right. Yeah. For, I, for a Dylan Cease, would you consider a Heston Kersed or uh Colton Kowser? Both of them? Not both. One. Just one. one of them, yeah, I would probably give up sure. one of the two. I okay. would probably give up, but yeah. I'd be inclined to want to use Santander in that trade and then go out on the marketplace and replace him with somebody that I think could be a little bit more consistent and da and dangerous, which is Justin Turner. Yeah, because right now they're probably thinking about Heston Kerstead as their eventual Santander right. replacement. Right. So right. I would agree with yeah. you. I would agree with that. All right, boys. Uh, they, they're off and running. Uh, Ross, I got to ask you two questions. Number one is, are you surprised with the rapidity of how moves are being made all of a sudden? You know, at this early, uh, yeah. people, are, people are getting their... Uh, they're uh, itching. They're, they're itching. doing some... They're getting it done <laughs> before uh, anybody else steps in. And yep. these are the these are the people who are aggressive, and they they know what they want, they know what they need, and they're going out and getting it, and hopefully for a decent price. I mean, if the Dodgers go and get everybody thereafter, they're going to have uh, a half a billion dollars in salary. That's going to be amazing. Plus Otani, that, that's a big uh, Otani is somebody they're really uh, it sounds like they're going after. So that could be very interesting. Do you see any way in the world? that Kershaw really makes it out of L.A. on a one-year deal anywhere else? I, it depends on who they go. They're going – they're trying to get every starting pitcher. Well, he's from, he's from Texas, so, I mean, there's thoughts about Texas. I'm talking about us on a one-year deal, Clayton Kershaw. Jeez, I, that I, – the Orioles – Ain't going to happen, Luke. Gonna happen, Luke. Just don't right. see it, yeah. I, I, yeah, right. I see him. It, well, I, I think Kershaw is going to be out until midsummer, if you recall. Oh, uh, he's going to be. I didn't know. Yes, that he's be yes. He long. he's okay. hoping to return at some point. Okay, in the summer. Never, if he never mind. To I pitch. thought I had read that. Yeah. He, okay, but Ross. My other question for you. I've been playing this thing, the Immaculate Grid, and you come up with names. I'm going to throw you names that Luke probably never heard of. Bob Friend. Yeah. Bob Bob Perky. Right. Okay. Well, today I came up with one, and I wanted to see if he fit the two teams he had to play for. 
Cal McLish. You remember Cal McLish? He was a he was a pitching coach. I never played against him. He never was a played against coach, him. A very uh, well, uh, go, good. Go, when, when you get a chance, uh, I'm not going to put you on the spot here. You can answer it next week. Right. I saw a season where he won like went 19 and five, I think 19 and seven. I think it was with Cleveland 1959. But the point of the story is pitched like, I think 235, 250 innings in that neighborhood. You know how many batters he struck out? I know. 55 batters. Man. And he won 19 games. And his own run not. average. Well, but all those pitchers back then, they were the big winners in baseball. They never struck anybody out. Yeah, it's but, unbelievable. One of my the year I won 20 games, I didn't struck a lot of guys either. <laughs> <laughs> when you got when you got a defense, guys that can chase down your mistakes and yeah. infielders that are not afraid to get in front of the ball of those rockets you give up, that means a lot, you know. But uh yeah, that's uh, I, that, I was astounded today at that it, thing. I said, Oh, McClish yeah. won 19 games that year. And yeah, I go across and he struck out 55 batters. See, a, a lot of and probably those 55 strikeouts were times when guys were in scoring position and when he, and he needed and a he strikeout, needed, he needed a strikeout. That was yeah. how the game was played, yeah, uh, yeah. back in the, you know, back in the days, back in the 50s and 60s. Well, yeah. even even the 70s and, and 80s, yeah. it started to yeah. change, you know, as, as that. And it, uh, when it kept your pitch count down, uh, and you know, it's just it was the way it was done. You had some defensive guys make them hit the ball, and hopefully, it goes to somebody. All right. Uh, that's going to wrap us up for today. We did a good job uh, putting out some free agents and some trade candidates for the Orioles. I don't know how quickly they'll move, but I'll tell you what, I think the market is going to move very quickly. Yeah, Stanley, hey, look, let me give you one more guy. J just your, your ideas. The Pittsburgh closer, uh, David uh, Bernard. Bednar, yeah, Bednar. Yeah. What, uh, what are your thoughts? This guy had 39 saves. Um what would Pittsburgh? What would induce Pittsburgh to give up a? I don't know. That, that was one. That's I mean, under under team control. Yeah. I certainly have interest in them. Luke, do you see them sort of proactively? Well, unless there's him? he's all, and Bednar's also a Pittsburgh guy, so yeah. there's probably a certain attachment uh, that the Pirates have to him and their fans have to him. But if the Pirates think for some reason that he's a ticking time bomb. Yeah. Uh, as a uh, closer, maybe they think that now is the time sell, to hit sell the, high on yeah it. to hit sell the eject high. button on that. Uh, mm -hmm. Another guy with the Pirates is uh, Mitch Keller, uh, yeah. who the Orioles. I love saw. Keller. I love he, Keller. The, the Orioles saw him at his absolute best yeah. back in May. If they could at, trade Keller. I would equate that almost to Dylan Cease. I think he's he's in that ballpark. Yeah, he's another guy with huge stuff whose yeah. results have been a little underwhelming throughout his yeah. career yeah. uh and then uh, another buy a buy low candidate for me would be brady singer uh in kansas yeah. city uh but uh, you know he started to turn around in the second half and i doubt kansas city is going to want to sell that low on him but he's i a have kid. i have an insight in the brady singer that every year he's going to come back in the second half and tease you mm -hmm. when the games when your team's 25 mm -hmm. games out of first place <laughs> 30 games in, He's he's a he's a head case. I love his stuff. Don't right. get me wrong, but he beats himself an awful lot. Hey guys, I appreciate it as always. No other Zoom this week. Next week, Ross, Luke, and I will be back on Monday, and we'll work on something else for the middle of the week. Uh, that's going to do it for today. We thank our friends at AJ Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis. We thank our friend. We thank our friends at Superbook Sports. Uh, and they are uh, offering you that um, that promo code. If you use the promo code STANCHARLES23, right where my cursor is, and it doesn't have to be capitals or anything, any way you spell it, no spaces, you get a $250 first bet match bonus, win or lose, up to $250. All right, and we thank the Costas in. Guys, have a great Thanksgiving, all of you. And to all of our viewers out there, we wish you the same. Happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. Bye.